Hello, Midway. Uh, we hope you're doing well. Uh, my name is Tim Helton, your missionary to Alaska, and I am coming to you today from cold, dark uh, Wrangell, Alaska, where I have been asked to share just a little bit from God's Word um, uh, for you today in the area of devotion. So um, if you would like to follow along with me, uh, there's just a couple of verses that I want to share with you today, and they are found in Revelation chapter 7, starting in verse 9. Now, I know there's a lot going on in our world today. There's a lot of unrest. There's a lot of things that aren't very sure. There's a lot of um, hateful attitudes. There's a lot of hurt that's taking place in our world today. And for the Christian, for the believer in Christ, if we're not careful, we can become very uh, discouraged in this. And some people may even throw up their hands and say, why bother? Why bother with going outside of the four walls of our church with the gospel? No one seems to want to listen. No one seems to care anything about the Lord or his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, why bother with any of this? And that's just what I want to look at briefly uh, today with you as we look in Revelation chapter 7, starting in verse 9. And God's word says this. It says, After this I beheld, <clears throat> and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So what do we have today? We have this passage in, um, in Revelation, and some things we have to understand in the area of Revelation is the book of Revelation can be at times a little difficult to understand, a little confusing, and that's why when we study the book of Revelation, we want good help. So we want good, uh, solid Bible study notes. We want good commentary on, on what we're looking at because the book of Revelation can be uh, a little confusing at times. But if there's one thing that's great about the book of Revelation is the vision that John received from the Lord. Now we have John, he's on the Isle of Patmos, and why is he there? Because he was simply preaching the word of God. He lived in tumultuous times, and his uh, his witness for Christ would not be thwarted. Uh, you could not remove the fire from his soul to preach the love of Christ. And so the authorities thought, we need to get rid of John. And so they put him on the Isle of Patmos. Now, this is something I also think we need to understand, is because John was a man, I'm sure there was a lot of fear uh, that was going through his mind and through his heart at the time. But as usual, what does God do? God shows up at just the right time. And I believe that God gifted John with a vision of heaven. Now, did John see all of heaven? I don't believe he saw all of heaven. I don't believe he got to see the total splendor uh, of 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 God with within within heaven, but needless to say, God got a excuse me. John received a vision of heaven. Now, what did he see? He saw some incredible, incredible things in heaven. I'm sure he saw the Lamb of God. He saw the splendor of the streets uh, of heaven. He saw uh, people that had gone before him in the face, and he'd seen all these and tremendous things. But what we just read, I think, is the apex of what John saw in heaven. Again, this verse says, after this, after what, after what did John uh, do? After he had seen all those different things, after he'd, he'd been allowed to see all the things that God allowed him to see, he said, after this, I beheld in lo, a great multitude. Now, I've heard it said many times, uh, especially back in my Bible college days and learning the things of the ministry, I had mentors tell me, Tim, it's not all about the numbers, but according to this, Maybe it is. Now, as far as numbers, it's not for our pride. It's not so that man can be lifted up. But what is the multitude, multitude here? This is an, an example. This is a result of the gospel. Now, mind you, these are things that are going to take place. These are things that's, that are going to happen. And John sees a great multitude. And the Bible says that no man can number. Of what, though? Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. So automatically we know that the gospel that has been preached isn't just for us here in the Americas. It's just not a North American gospel. It's just not a gospel of the United States. It is for the nations, the nations of people who spoke different languages. And what, did, what are they doing? What did John see? They were standing before the throne of God and before the Lamb. Man, that's awesome. 
In these very difficult times that we're living in, where there's a lot of uncertainty, going through a tremendous pandemic, uh, many of us have gone through the coronavirus. I personally have had it. My wife, Missy, has had it as well. We've also lost a very close friend because of this virus. I have friends right now who have parents struggling with the virus. And there's a lot of uncertainty right now, and there's a lot of pain. As far as the future goes within our own country, there's a lot of things we're concerned about. So again, the question that I pose at the beginning of this, of this devotion, why bother with any of this? I think if we go back to Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 again, why should we do what we do as the church? Because of the multitudes. The multitudes have not been reached yet. Not every people group in our world has been reached yet. Uh, the gospel has not gone out to all people, group, people groups or nations yet, and that's why we do what we do. That's why we have gone to different countries. That's why we are currently in Alaska right now, because there are people on a little island in southeast Alaska who don't know what it means to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. All the missionaries that you support, that they are laboring, they are working to share the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, with the people they are working with. The, with, uh, with you all there in, in Midway, in Raleigh, North Carolina, you have the multitudes around you right now who need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, no government, no political party, there is nothing that's going to provide the peace that people are looking for than the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what is the gospel? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And honestly, that is all that matters. And that is the answer that the world needs and the answer that the, that the world is looking for today. So why do we bother with what we do? Why do we attend church services on Sundays and Wednesdays and get involved in the ministers of our churches? It's for the gospel of Jesus Christ, and it's for the multitude that John saw, this multitude of people. The only way that there's a crowd of people in heaven is when it's people like, like you and myself that make a decision that all that matters in our lives is sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and being passionate about that. Yeah, we have things in our minds that we're concerned about and, and things that, uh, that, that um, uh, concern us and, and worry us at times, but our sole focus should be the gospel of Christ so that we stand in heaven and we stand with John and we look and, and, and after these things, after of life, and we look and we see the multitudes that are in heaven because someone cared enough to share the love of Jesus Christ with them and the gospel of the Lord Jesus. So why do we do what we do? Because the multitudes still wait. This vision that John had is a vision of things to come. So there's a tremendous amount of work to do. Now, is the Lord coming back soon? You would think so. After you see the, the status of our world and the situation of our world and, uh, and what's happening in the lives of people, you would think that Jesus is going to come back. But until he does, there's a tremendous amount of work to do. And can it be accomplished? Of course it can, once we are gospel-centered within our personal lives and in the lives of those around us. So um, before I sign off here, I just want to thank you all so much. You have been a part of our ministry for a very long time. And just rest assured, we are so appreciative of uh, your part in our ministry and allowing us uh, to partner with you and be a part of the Midway family. And hopefully someday soon, we'll have an opportunity to come and see you. God bless you all.